What's up, titos and titas? Jared and Conde here. You're watching Tito Fit. In this channel, we talk about fitness, we talk about health, we talk about a lot of stuff you can do to help enhance your life and live your best life, especially if you are a tito and tita. We are going to be talking about smartwatches and wearable activity trackers. These watches, these wearable devices are becoming very integral to our lifestyle. And of course, the most important thing about them is that if you're serious about your fitness, if you're serious about your health, there's a saying by uh, management guru Peter Drucker that what gets measured gets improved. So if you want to improve something, you have to first track it. You have to first measure it so that you can improve it. Now, for those of you who don't know or who don't own these devices yet, pretty soon you probably will. Why is that? Why do I say that? It's a multi-billion dollar industry. In 2016, smartwatches and activity tracker market had a revenue worldwide of 16 billion US dollars. In 2017, that number increased by 3 billion to 9 billion. In 2018, it became $26 billion and in 2020, it's forecasted to have around a $44 billion. So it has almost tripled. And by 2022, that number is expected to hit $72 billion US dollars. So that means that worldwide adoption of wearing smart devices, smart watches, and trackers is going to hit a high pretty soon so in my case i wear this one it's an apple watch this is the only wearable device that i have actually ever worn and so we are going to talk about whether activity trackers actually work so they can do a lot of things uh, answer your messages so that if you're in a meeting you don't have to take out your phone and that your watch is going to vibrate if you're receiving a call uh, and it's not gonna ring out loud so that you don't disrupt the meeting and you can actually uh, like glance at your watch and check messages so things like that but in the fitness setting which is what what's relevant to us the most important thing is one it can track your activity so for a lot of people who are trying to get those 10,000 steps in we're gonna talk about that more in a bit or it can tell you the number of calories that you burn in a day number of calories that you burn in a specific workout it can even decipher between different kinds of workouts it can also tell you the number of hours that you've been standing and if you need to stand more so when you're sitting if you're watching TV for example after some time if you don't move it's going to give you an alert by giving you a light vibration so to tell you to stand up another thing is that some of them can actually track your sleep so they can measure the quality of your sleep are you getting to deep sleep or is your sleep uh, of a very low quality and that's what we are going to talk about we are going to talk about the accuracy of these watches are they accurate are they accurate in estimating calories are they accurate in tracking these things if you haven't yet Please consider subscribing if you're interested in these topics, fitness, health, and lifestyle as well, all related to fitness, of course. Please subscribe. And then, guys, sirain nyo yung like button na yan. Gawin yung blue, please. Sirain nyo. So, how do these work? They work by using a series of accelerometers or motion sensors. Most commonly, what's called a three-axis accelerometer. They basically try to measure your movement through three axes. So, that's how they will measure your calorie expenditure, things like that. If you're running, some of these even have a built-in GPS that can actually detect where you are for cycling also and the like. Now, how accurate are they? A Stanford University of Medicine study was conducted in 2017 to measure just how accurate these smart watches and these wearable activity trackers are. So what they found out was that they tested the seven most popular brands including the Apple Watch, the Samsung Galaxy Gear, and the Fitbit. So those are the three more popular ones that are commonly used. And what they found out was that one, they're actually very accurate when it comes to measuring heart rate. There is a less than 5% margin of error. So that's pretty amazing. So that means that if you wanna find out your heart rate, a smartwatch or a wearable activity tracker is actually pretty accurate when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to measuring calorie expenditure or how many calories you burn, depending on the activity that you do, now that's 
a different story. They found that these devices can be off by 23% to as much as 93%. That's a very, very big range there of margin of error. I mean, 20% in and of itself, 23% to be exact, is already quite a big range. That means it's, for example, that today you burned 1,000 calories, you could actually either have just burned either 800 calories, a little less than 800 calories, or actually 1,230 calories. So there's a big range there and it only said you did 1,000. So if you are using this to track your calories or your macros of how much you eat in, you could be in trouble because 23% is on the lower end but 90% on the higher end. So can you imagine that? It's see that you only burned 100 calories when the truth was you burned 190 calories or even worse, just 10 calories, okay? So what happens is you end up eating a lot more than you ought to just because your tracker uh, told you that this is the number of calories you did. Now, why is that? Because these calorie trackers, they work through an algorithm. When you buy a tracker, First thing it asks you is to input your age, your gender, height, and your weight. So based on that data, the algorithm will estimate how much calories you burn given a certain activity, whether that be running, whether that be working out, doing uh, yoga, doing cycling, so on and so forth. At least with the Apple Watch, that's what it does. The problem is that algorithm does not take into account other things like, for example, Two people can be the exact same height and weight and age and gender. Let's say, for example, John and Bob. So John and Bob, let's say they're both 30 years old, their, their height's 5'10", and then they weigh, let's say, the same, 160 pounds. Now the problem is, John is very, very active. John lifts weights three times a week, he runs twice a week, and then he, jo he plays basketball on weekends. Whereas Bob is actually just your sedentary, your standard sedentary office worker who doesn't do anything but uh, work, go home, uh, watch TV, uh, go on his PS4, uh, watch YouTube, okay? And the algorithm will treat them the same way. So that's the problem there. Whereas obviously, if you didn't know yet, John would definitely burn more calories than Bob simply because he is actually, his muscle mass and his hormonal makeup will dictate that his body burns more calories than Bob, even if they did the exact same activity. Say for example, the two of them work out. Let's just say the two of them work out and do the exact same workout. Let's just say for argument's sake that they do a 30 minute jog, okay? Now John will burn more calories than Bob. That's just the way it is. Muscle burns more calories. It's more metabolically active. And assuming that because John does have a lot more muscle on him, on his frame, because he did lift weights three times a week, he would definitely burn more calories than Bob. So uh, the algorithms of these watches does not take those things into account. On the other hand, the YouTube algorithm can actually recommend this video to more people who this information might be more useful too. So don't forget to smash that like button just so that the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm can recommend this video. So let's move on. Let's go back to that Stanford study. Of course, they used a electrocardiograph or basically an ECG to measure the heart rate while wearing the watch. So of course, the ECG is the gold standard for testing for heart rate as compared to the watch. And that's what they found out. There's a less than 5% margin of error or difference from using an ECG. On the other hand, when they were going to estimate calorie expenditure, they used that thing where you attach it. Um, it's a mask. It's actually a mask that measures your breathing, your oxygen uh, intake, and your carbon dioxide output. That's what they used to measure your uh, calories expended. And when they found out that was the range between the seven different watches, it had an, an error rate of 27% all the way up to 93%. So that tells you that 
maybe you shouldn't base some life decisions like eating a certain number of calories or overestimating a number of calories or underestimating them based on what your watch tells you about the calories that you have expended. A side note, let me tell you about a, a specific experience I've had. So honestly, I, I believe that these watches do have some use. They do have some use. I'm not one to say now, well, okay, they're not accurate, so you might as well not just wear them, right? So that's not it. Uh, for me, I, I like wearing them just because it gives you that sense of achievement. It's like a game that if you hit a number of steps in a day, it gives you a high five or a pat on the back. Or same thing, if you complete a workout um, over a week, a specific number of days or even a month, you unlock certain uh, achievements. And if you're the type to want to share all of this stuff on social media, you can. So if you're the type of person, you know what, definitely use a smartwatch, why not? I mean, just don't make, uh, just don't use it to estimate the calories that you're supposed to eat or take in. So that's the thing. I, I actually have a experience of the inaccuracy of this. So uh, once in a while at night, let's say I'm kicking back, I'm Netflix and chilling, Netflix and chilling, okay, or playing uh, games, video games on my PS4, and of course, you, you'll probably be sitting for more than an hour, and the watch alerts me to get up, so I get up, walk a little bit around the house, go to the kitchen, grab some water, maybe get some uh, a snack or whatever, and when I come back, I counted the steps that I took, so it took me about 25 steps to get to the kitchen. When I look back at my watch, it only measured that I did 8 steps, so it was like, there's something wrong with this. On the other hand, there was a time when I was actually walking where it said, I, I, I was just walking, pace, doing some pacing, very, very uh, short pacing back and forth during a workout. And then after the workout, I saw the watch said that I had already walked about 600 meters. I was like, that's practically impossible. The workout lasted, the Metcon lasted about five or six minutes and I wasn't pacing back and forth that much. So it really can be off to a certain degree. But I do like using it to check my heart rate while I'm working out to see if, if it's all in the head, if, if I'm having a harder time than I should, or if I'm actually okay, if I can actually start getting back on to the workout, things like that, or if my rest has been sufficient between sets, or if I need to rest a little bit more. So things like that. So your experience may vary, and it's really up to you if you think uh, a wearable or a smartwatch is worth it. Now, I do, there is some interest on my part to purchase a different type of a wearable. So there are these new rings. They're just rings. I think it's called the Aura Ring. The Aura Ring that you can order and it tracks things like your sleep, heart rate variability, things like that. And you're probably not gonna be taking it off as much as you do a watch. So I personally don't like wearing a watch all that much. Whenever I'm, uh, I'm not out, I try to take it off. But I did notice that I, I have been wearing it a little bit more often uh, during the lockdowns and the quarantines just to see if I've been getting up off my, off my butt and walking a little bit more. So I'm trying to increase the number of steps, of course, since we've been in quarantine. We have not been as out and about as we used to, right? So with that, I think it does help a bit. So guys, let me know if this video was helpful for you. If you wear a smartwatch, please comment down below. If you like your smartwatch or your wearable activity tracker, let us know down below if you have any uh, comments or suggestions on how we can help you guys more. Please let us know down below and please wait for our next video. Thank you very much, titos and titas. So we will see you in the next one. Again, I'm Jared Conde. And you are watching Tita Fit. Thank you.